Hey, what is up guys? I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I will share with you the basics of accounting and the key things you need to know for your business tax filing so that you are equipped with the necessary accounting knowledge for your business. Or at the very least, you will know what is the right question to ask your accountant when you approach for their service. And in case you missed it, if you want to learn how to set up a sole proprietorship, then feel free to check out this video that I've made earlier. I'll put it down below for you. Before we begin, do check out this article published by The Edge that is written by a tax expert. That article is filled with lots of useful information so without wasting any more time, let's jump right into today's content. To start off today's video, I would like to just quickly highlight your responsibilities for running a business as listed on LSDN's website. You will need to complete Form B for sole proprietor or Form P for partnership. You can engage qualified tax agent to prepare business accounts if required. You need to compute your tax payable, which I've talked about in my previous video and I will cover more in this video as well. You will also need to keep all business records, supporting documents for deductions, reliefs and rebate for a period of 7 years. Produce and keep your business records include profit and loss account, balance sheet, sales records, purchase records, stock receipts, bills and bank statements. And the last date of submission for Form B and P is 30th June of the subsequent year. Feel free to read the rest of it. But having said those, that leads me to the main point of this video and that is to produce your own PL and balance sheet. There is no need for cash flow statements for sole proprietors, but you can always prepare your own simple dinky cash flow tracker. It will be very helpful when you are reconciling your bank statements. Yo! Let's start off with the PL or some call it the income statement. This is where you record down your business income and business expenses and ultimately derive your net profit for the year before tax of course. For the purpose of filing Form B for sole proprietors, you will need to fill in this information for your PL, which if I may extract it to an Excel sheet should look something like this. I know this looks daunting and there's many items involved but allow me to highlight a few key items that is most commonly used and for the rest feel free to read up yourself. If it's not related, then just put it as zero. The first item we're gonna talk about is sales or turnover, which is essentially referring to your business income. According to LHDN's definition, if your income falls under any of this category, then it can and will be recognized as a business income. I will put it plain and simple for you. As long as your business operation is conducted in Malaysia, whether you are a YouTuber, blogger, online course seller, software developer, freelancer, cake seller, Shopee seller, or whatever that is, all of that will be treated as business income regardless of whichever currency or method you receive for payment. If your income is received in Ringgit Malaysia, then that's great, that's simple for your accounting. But if your income is received in foreign currency, whether through PayPal or your foreign bank account, you can then convert them to the Ringgit Malaysia equivalent according to the foreign exchange rate listed by the Bank Negara Malaysia for the particular day for accounting purposes. If your business involves selling physical products or there are stock inventory involved, then you can minus off the amount for cost of goods sales COGS before you arrive at your gross profit. Yo! The second key item is your expenses. I can go on for 20 minutes talking about business expense, but let me just summarize it for you. Note that only expenses incurred in the production of your business income can be treated as business expense, which can then be used to offset against your taxable income, which also means less tax. Yay! Now, according to LHDN, some examples of the allowable business expenses include payment for wages, salary, rental of business premise, interest on business loan, and expenses for repair and blah blah blah. So so just to give you an idea, my YouTube channel business expense can include things like internet bills, rental payments, video editing and music software subscriptions, business meals, business travel expenses, my video props if I am reviewing something or if I'm driving around to vlog for my YouTube channel, then I can also claim that petrol mileage as a business expense. So depending on the nature of your business, your business expense may vary from my business expense. So to help you out, here are the 6 tests from that article which can hopefully help you to decide if your expenses can qualify as tax deductible. Now, income and expenses make up the most part of your PL. 
but before you compute the final taxable amount, you can still offset your business income by claiming capital allowance. In another words, you can incur depreciation expense which is a non-cash item for the assets that you purchase for your business such as computer systems, smartphones, transport vehicles, cameras and etc whichever applicable for your business. Now, if the asset purchase costs you less than 2,000 ringgit, then according to the official definition, it is classified under small value assets. So you can claim special allowance which is 100% tax write-off as depreciation expense in the first year. For example, if I bought this camera lens at 1.5k, then I can deduct 1.5k off my taxable income by claiming capital allowance. However, if the asset purchase costs you more than 2,000 ringgit, then you need to claim capital allowance according to the initial allowance rate and the annual allowance rate. Just to give you an idea, if I bought a 20,000 ringgit camera for my YouTube business and since the camera falls under the plant and machinery bracket, if I'm not mistaken, I can then claim initial allowance of 20% for the first year plus annual allowance of 14% starting from the first year onwards. So just to illustrate, for the 20,000 ringgit purchase, year one will be initial allowance of 20% plus annual allowance of 14%. So times that with 20k that will be 6,800 ringgit for the first year. Year 2 onwards will be annual allowance of 14% only times 20k which is 2,800 ringgit so on and so forth up until the 20,000 ringgit is fully depreciated which would take me 6 years in total. So at the end of your PNL, once you write off this depreciation expense the remaining value will be the net profit and loss from operations which you can then treat it as the taxable amount for the year. This line is very very important because not only it is your taxable income for the year, this number will also flow into your balance sheet which is parked under the owner's equity. I will touch on that later. Now with that said, I just want to remind you that whatever that I'm saying here is probably an oversimplification of the complex tax mechanisms. The actual computation may vary according to your business nature, so please consult an accountant to assess you with this. So once you have sorted out your PL, your next job to prepare your balance sheet will be slightly easier. I said slightly easier because it is still a very daunting task for beginners to balance their balance sheet. Looking at LHDN's Form B requirement, these are the items they will ask you to fill up. So if I export this to an Excel sheet, it will look something like this. So just a quick crash course on balance sheet, it is also called the Statement of Financial Position which tracks the three main things of a business, assets, liabilities and owner's equity. The balance sheet follows this formula closely where assets equals to liabilities plus owner's equity. For example, a 50,000 ringgit vehicle, if I were to buy it with a 90% loan, that means 90% of 50,000 is parked under liabilities, 10% of 50,000 is my own money so we can park it under owner's equity and their total will be 50,000 ringgit which is the asset amount. So as you can see, both sides are balanced left and right 50,000 ringgit. According to the double entry system in the realm of accounting, each and every one of the transactions you incur for your business must be recorded into at least two of the accounts in the accounting system which is what you commonly hear as credit and debit. Now looking back at this formula, to help you visualize it, we can split them into two halves, left and right. The left is assets and the right is liabilities and owner's equity. If I were to inject 20,000 ringgit cash into my business from my personal account, the cash under assets on the left will increase by 20,000 ringgit. The equity capital value under owner's equity on the right will also increase by 20,000 ringgit. So net difference of the left and right will be zero, hence the balance sheet is balanced. Another example, what if I were to buy this 9,500 ringgit camera lens for my business with cash from my business bank account? That means I will reduce 9.5k from the cash in bank under assets to pay the camera shop and then I will increase 9.5k in the value of the plant and machinery under fixed assets since the camera lens is a long-term depreciating asset. So minus 9.5k plus 9.5k net change to the assets will be zero and hence the balance sheet is balanced left and right. So I hope you get the gist of it. Same goes to your revenue, when you receive it, you receive it in the form of cash under the asset column and on the other hand, you will increase or reduce under the owner's equity in the form of your profit loss which is inclusive of your non-cash items such as depreciation expense that we have covered earlier. I know this can be a little bit confusing but I have just given you all the necessary keywords and basic fundamentals for you to perform your own Google search. Just try and build your own balance sheet on an Excel, there are tons of examples online and I'm sure you'll get a hang of it in no time.
Another thing that you need to know is the accounting basis which can come in the form of cash basis or accrual basis. Their difference lies in the timing of when the transaction is recorded on your account. Cash basis basically means that you record the income or expenses whenever money enters or leaves your bank account, simple as that. Whereas for accrual basis, you recognize your income or expenses at the invoice date. For example, if I send an invoice to someone on the 25th of December, but they only pay me on the 10th of January of the following year, I can then account this income on the 25th of December, since that is when my invoice was sent out. Now, since the invoice was sent on 25th December and you only receive your payment on the subsequent financial year. You can then treat it as accounts receivables in the asset column under your balance sheet. On the other hand, accounts payable is the exact opposite. If you still owe someone money and you haven't paid them even though they have invoiced you, then that amount will be treated as accounts payable under liabilities. Yo! So up until this point, we have just barely scratched the surface and I believe for some of you, you are still very confused and you may find this very daunting. So it is for me, I've learned this over the course of 2 years so I don't expect you to fully understand it within one video unless my explanation is that good. Anyways, if you hate to learn and do all of this yourself, then of course you can always go for paid accounting service to help you sort out all of this mess. Should be very easy to find with a simple Google search. Just to give you a heads up, for sole proprietorships, they will usually offer you two sets of services. The first one is accounting service which usually includes accounting and tax advice, reconciliation of your bank statements, preparation of your financial account and etc. And this service can go around 1000 ringgit per year. The second is Form B Submission Service which covers tax computation and filing Form B on your behalf and this usually comes at around 400 ringgit. Of course, these numbers are just rough estimation but hopefully you get the idea. Just approach any of the accounting firm and negotiate the price to fit your requirements. If you are new to all of this, then I highly highly recommend you to pay for such service at least for the first year so that you can learn from them as well. Just treat it as a tuition fee and the best part is you can also treat this as a business expense to deduct your taxable income. What a way to kill two birds with one stone. Anyways, I hope this video gave you a better idea on the bigger picture and hopefully can help you to formulate better questions for you to ask your tax accountant and do let me know what are your thoughts after watching this video. I am curious what you have gained from this video so leave a comment down below in the comment section. The usual disclaimer applies, I am not a certified accountant, tax or financial advisor. Whatever that I am sharing here is based on my personal understanding and experience only. So please take it with a pinch of salt, I am just another guy on YouTube. Alright, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, stay invested, and as usual, I will see you in the next one.